Hello YouTube, welcome back to Matt's Country. My name is Matt, unsurprisingly, and today we're going to talk about pre-charged pneumatic air, air rifles and air pistols, PCPs. So, first thing, what does it mean, PCP? What's the pre-charged bit? Here we have an Air Arms S410. This particular version is called the TDR, the takedown rifle, because I can take it apart. This bit comes off, silence around screws in a couple of seconds, and it all goes into a special design rucksack. What's important about it is that the bottom thing, that long thick tube, is the cylinder that holds the air, and the top thinner tube is the barrel the pellet goes out of. How does it work? What goes on? The air in this bottom cylinder is so compressed, so compressed, that it can push lots and lots of shots through that at the in, in the UK, just under 12 foot pound. How does it work? Well, this lever here would cock back. It pulls a spring back. Not the same spring as in a spring-powered air rifle. This is a small spring and it's pulling back a thing called a hammer. Then you put the pellet in, you push the bolt forward. When you pull the trigger, the small spring shoots the hammer forward and it whacks a valve on the big cylinder. That lets a certain amount of air out. That air goes up that way, blasts up the skirt of the pellet, the pellet starts spiraling up the barrel and it shoots out. And I thought for a long time, how am I gonna define that without taking apart a gun, which is never gonna work on YouTube. So, can of deodorant. Other deodorants are available. This is the equivalent to that big barrel, that big cylinder, okay? Uh, the big cylinder, and the barrel sits upon it, and as we can all tell with a can of deodorant, it's gonna spray somewhere like that. When we cock the gun, we pull the small spring and hammer back, we put the pellet in, probably about here, aiming that way, and as we pull the trigger, the hammer, does that and it hits it and it hits it with a certain amount of pressure and it allows a certain amount of air out. In this instance it would go up, turn sideways through the block and blast the pellet out, whoosh. So if the spring is more powerful it comes forward harder and it hits it for longer. If it's a very weak spring you get little low power shots. That's one of the ways that air rifles control power but it's not the only other way, because it's also possible to change the size of the hole that the air squirts through. But we do have a problem. Because when this cylinder is charged to its maximum, a fresh charge, and in this gun's case, that's 190 bar, 190, which is an awful lot more than your tires on your car, it's under such pressure that the spring that hits the valve, which is a set power spring, really struggles to push it because there's so much pressure pushing on the valve. Then after a couple of shots, the pressure in this drops just enough that this starts to hit it the same amount every time. My kitchen now smells of deodorant. <clears throat> That's why you get this thing called a power curve on a PCP that doesn't have any kind of regulation other than the hammer and the spring. They're still very good, they're very reliable, there's nearly no recoil, there's a tiny bit of action movement, and the pellet's still going that way, so you're still holding it back, but in comparison with the spring air rifle, there is no recoil at all. Get that out of the way. Right, how can I define it further? This is a Crossman 2240 air pistol. I happen to have a scope on it. It hasn't got its handle because I fit a rifle stock regularly and it has a little silencer clipped on the front. This is something I teach people to shoot with. It's very, very good. And the reason it's so good is this. Just pretend that that bottom thing is the pre-charged pneumatic cylinder. It kind of is, I'll explain why in a minute. You pull the bolt up, back. That's pulling the little spring back on the hammer. When this goes forward, there's now no pressure because we've cocked the spring. And when we pull the trigger, listen, you can actually hear the spring hitting the back of a valve. The only difference is, don't, don't blink, you're not gonna get shot. There is no air in this at the moment. Now the beauty of these, and I'm not here selling you Crossman products because that's not what I do, but this is a bloody great gun. I mean, I love my 2240. It runs on CO2 capsules. You put a tiny drop of oil on that. You then put that in there. You then screw this in. And as you turn it with a coin or a screwdriver, it puts pressure on the back of that cylinder until a little pin inside there punctures that bit you oiled. 
and you oil it so that the pin is always in good condition and doesn't get damaged. At the point that that gets punctured, the rubber seal on this has sealed this cylinder and this cylinder then fills up with CO2. Yeah, some of it's in that, but some of it's around it as well. This whole thing becomes the cylinder. I love them because they're so simple. They just work beautifully. The first couple of shots are rubbish power. Then you start getting your sort of five and a bit foot pound because we're in England. That's the maximum for an air pistol. They do do a rifle version of this and you can get proper air rifles that hold two or three of these or two, one that way and one that way and the needles puncture both ends. Don't discount CO2. This, this, I love this gun. I mean, it really is a great thing. But the reason it's the best is because you can hear click back. I then put a pellet in there shut it and you can hear the spring and the hammer hitting the valve. Right, so we've got this issue, yeah? The cylinder's full of air, the hammer hits it the first two times because it's a fresh load and the power's a bit low. So your first couple of pellets are a little bit low. Then the power comes up, you end up with this very slight power increase. It gets to a point where the power is at its maximum, still way under 12 foot pound in England, and then it starts to drop back down. And there's a point when it drops so low that the wind pressure, the air pressure in that cylinder needs recharging. Two, well, several ways of doing it, but you can use a stirrup pump, something like this, where you physically, you plug that, this is an air arms one, onto the end of the cylinder. Uh, the valve it fits to is under a dust cap to keep it clean. And you then, uh, you then tighten up a valve at the back so no air comes out, and you then start pumping. And it's quite a big job, and you go up and down, up and down, up and down, and eventually, after a lot of that, and I do mean a lot, you go and get to a pressure. Then you open the bleed valve. They've got non-return valves on the gun, so the air can't come back out. And But you only ever do it with one of those in the driest environment. Indoors, nowhere near the bathroom, nowhere near the shower, not in the kitchen, in a dry environment. Because otherwise you blast moisture into that don't ever stir it pump outdoors, not unless you're in the Sahara Desert somewhere. The other way to do it, of course, is with a dive bottle. Big deep sea diver's bottle, the sort of thing you'd have on your back if you were underwater. Dogs can't say hello, hello doggy. Good girl, off you go. Right, so we've got a PCP with a cylinder and a hammer and a spring and a whack and a pellet whooshing out. But we do have this power curve, which is why some guns have a thing called a regulator. And the regulator, sits between this and the barrel. It's a separate, smaller cylinder, and when you cock the gun, it allows itself to fill up with a certain amount of air, predetermined, so that when you pull the trigger, it lets the air out. That doesn't. A, you get more shots per cylinder, B, you get a more consistent shot count. Some guns come with them as standard, Sorry, the deodorant's being waved around again. Some guns come with them as standard, some you can have them upgraded to. Even ones that have got them as standard, you can put a better one in. So we are looking at pre-charged pneumatic, cylinder full of air, hammer back, or maybe a side lever, it's doing the same job, it's pulling a hammer back. When you pull the trigger, the hammer hits the valve, the pressure whooshes up the barrel, and the pellet is on its way. Right, if any of you got any questions, please ask below. Please share the love with this, uh, this whole channel because what I'm trying to do is to make sure that there is basic instruction that doesn't involve people being sold to. Just what this is all about. I'm keeping them under 10 minutes. Sometimes they're 14 or 15, some are only three or four, but I'm trying to average at 10 and I'm trying to make sure that you don't see too many adverts. You're told the truth. There's no bullshit. And I hope that goes down well with you all. Thank you very much for coming along. I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon again. And, uh, Safe shooting. Take care. Goodbye.